Hey guys, Teresa here. Welcome back to Lost My Thread. Today is another makes video, so I'm gonna be showing you everything that I've been sewing since January. I anticipate this is gonna be a bit of a longer one, so if you wanna go make a cup of tea, coffee, whatever it might be, come back with a snack, definitely this is a good time to do that. I have been thinking a bit about how I want to share everything that I've been planning, how to share everything that I've been making on this channel. When I first started my channel back in October, I didn't really want to do a what I've been sewing every single month because I know that my output really varies. So some months I make a ton, some months I don't make very much. And so I felt like rather than having a month where I've made a thing or nothing, maybe I'll just do a big one every three months and then I can show you everything that I've been doing. The problem with that is, for one, I've been kind of making a lot, so I feel like today there's gonna to be probably a little too much to share for what I would probably prefer as far as a length of video. But I also feel like for me, the longer ago that I made something, the harder it is for me to remember a lot of the details, to remember really what it was like when I'm sewing it, to remember what the fabric was like. I mean, it's just a little bit more of stretching my memory. And I feel like it makes more sense for me to talk about things when they're a little more fresh. So after this makes video, I am going to be doing one every single month. The other thing that I think is beneficial that with that is that I feel like people can often get into a bit of a comparison trap with looking to see that Oh, this person's making so much stuff all the time. She's making all these nice things. She never makes anything that she then doesn't present to us. And at the end of the day, like we all have our times, our months, our weeks where we've got more time, less time to sew, more energy and less energy as well for it. So I feel like it's important to share those months when I don't make as much because I think that's real and that's relatable. And I want to be being quite honest with all of you about what my sewing journey is like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this once a month from now on. So long preamble on an already long video, now over. That's that. Now there are some videos that I've already shared about some of the things that I've made this year, so I'm probably not gonna get into as much detail on here about those, but I wanna mention them because they are things that I made since January and that is the whole concept of what I'm sharing with you today. The first one is the button-up blouses that I've made. So I did a whole Battle of the Busty button-ups. I'm sure you've seen it if you've been following me for any length of time. You can go back and watch those videos if you wanna see a lot more detail about these shirts. And I mean a lot of detail about these shirts. But I will tell you just briefly the three shirts that I've made. I made the Birdie button-up blouse, and this is by Pattern Scout. I will put up some pictures of me in it because I know it's not gonna be very easy to show these things up close in the video, but I think it's great to see what they look like. This was a really pretty floral fabric that I got from Higgs and Higgs. All of the button-up shirts I got, the fabrics were all cotton poplins, all from Higgs and Higgs. The buttons were all from Textile Garden as well. I tried to keep everything consistent just to like have less factors when I was comparing these shirts. And this one in particular, I really love the buttons. They are super cute. Um, they're like a kind of glossy on the front, matte on the back, sort of see-through on the front, matte on the back. They're a really pretty color. I really love this shirt overall, but I did end up cropping it a little bit too much. So you can watch more about that in my video, like I said, other ones where I talk about these shirts. But that was a cute one to put together. The next shirt is the Mila shirt by Itch to Stitch. This one doesn't button all the way down, so it's just a part button. And this one has a really nifty sleeve um, button for a sleeve placket so you can fold, roll the sleeve up and button it in place. Again, I will be putting lots of pictures up. You don't need to hear me say that, you're seeing them right now, but it's just in my own head, I'm just saying it. But this was another really cute shirt. This one's a bit more oversized, so a bit looser, but super comfortable, really nice and easy to wear. I really love the fabric with the cute little black hearts on it. I feel like that was a really nice color on me as well, so I'm really happy with how that one turned out. And then this one is the Harrison shirt by Cashmirette. This one is probably, I think, like the overall slickest. It's really cool, really neat. It's a really great fit on the whole. I really do love how this one looks on me and I am very much planning to make more of that when Cashmere expand their size range. Currently I am slightly under their lowest size or their smallest size, so that's one that I'm going back to at some other point. To be honest, I'll probably go back to all of these at some point anyway, but that's the one that I've sort of thinking is probably likely to come up sooner rather than later. 
In my sewing plans video, you might have seen I am also planning a different version of the Birdie Button Up Blast by Pattern, Sc Pattern Scout. So I'll link to that if you wanna check that out in a minute if you haven't already seen it. But yeah, those are the shirts that I made earlier this month or last month, I guess, probably at this point. Now the other video that I talked about some of my recent makes was the one where I revealed what I made for Frugal Frax 2021. So again, I'm not gonna get into too much detail here about them. You can have a look at that video if you wanna see a bit more about those or if you haven't had enough of all the stuff I've made after watching this video. The first one was this Barden dress. This is a free sewing pattern from LB Textiles for Peppermint Magazine. This is a really pretty cute summery dress in a really gorgeous viscose linen from a fabric godmother. I really love the bias bound neckline and sleeves. I also chose to use the same bias binding for the hem. I added a waist tie to this one, so that was a hack that I added just to have a little bit of shaping around the waist. But I think that one turned out super cute. It feels so airy and breezy and breathable. And I know that when it's hot, it's gonna be so, so wonderful to wear but it's just really pretty. Those gathers really make it really a lovely, delicate kind of a summery dress. So that was a really successful make. For the frugal frocks, because I could not pick one dress, I couldn't just pick one. I also made this zero waist dress by Schnitchen Patterns. And I know when I show it, it doesn't really come across what it looks like when it's on me, but it has um, just like a big seam going down the side of the sleeve and down the, the side seam and it also has a waist tie with a, a waist channel on the inside so it does give that bit of overall shaping more than I was perhaps anticipating. I think this one turned out to be like a really cool dress. I feel like it's more wearable than I expected it to be. It's a lot of fun to wear honestly with those sleeves so I think this was a really cool fun make. A little bit different for me but different isn't always a bad thing so I'm really happy with how that one turned out. There are also a couple of gifts that I actually didn't make this year. I made them at the end of last year, but I wasn't able to share them with you because they were gifts, so they were not yet with the recipients. I didn't want to spoil the surprises. So I can tell you a bit about those now. One was the Dogwood Apron by Helen's Closet Patterns. This was something that I made for my husband's uncle. I got him in the Secret Santa in our family, and he is somebody who works with his hands, makes stuff a lot. He has basically like rebuilt their family home. He does metalwork, woodwork. He's currently like vamping up a camper van. I mean, he's got all kinds of stuff that he does with his hands and I felt like this would be such a great thing for him to have. He also really likes to make things for other people as well. So I felt like he would really appreciate a handmade item and this seemed like a really good one for him. I really love how this turned out. I think it's really cool. So. This main fabric was a denim, it was eight ounce black washed denim from Sister Mintaka. Love that denim fabric, really cool. It was bought as like a remnant, but I would totally buy more of it and make jeans in the future. I did decide to add a little bit of contrast. There's like a little band that I put on there that's I say is probably optional whether you want to add that or not, but I also just love the little pop of color on there. So that red band was actually leftover fabric from my Chi Town chinos that I made. They're a Robert Kaufman cotton twill and it's called paprika that color and I feel like it pops so well against the red. I think that's a really cool contrast. There was another fabric that I used on the inside of the welt pockets. Oh yeah, there's welt pockets on this, which is so fun, really cool. It looks really neat on the whole. I was really pleased with how this came together. I feel like it looks really slick and really cool. I also used that same fabric on the inside of it, I guess like the lining back of the apron. And this was another Robert Kaufman. This was called Suburbia, a quilting weight cotton. And I got that one from Eternal Maker. Sorry, I'm looking at some notes because I want to make sure that I give shout outs to the fabric shops where I bought them. The Robert Kaufman cotton twill, that paprika one that's the kind of contrast, I also bought from Sister Mintaka, so just so that I'm saying where everything comes from. But yeah, I thought like it was a really fun fabric to use as a lining because it's got some little tools on it. It's also the colors really go together as well, so I thought that was overall quite a fun one. And I did choose to do some really obvious top stitching on there. A lot of that you don't necessarily have to do such big bold top stitching if you're a little bit unsure about your straight lines and gonna struggle to get them nice and neat. But I loved that that would then bring together that red contrast fabric. You'd have the red on the top, stitch top stitching 
and I just love the way that it pops. So that was a really fun element and that's basically adding lots of small pockets onto the apron which are really helpful and really handy. So you can put you know little small objects in there that you don't want to lose. If you're unscrewing something or whatever you can pop the screws in there and you're not going to lose them. There's just a lot of variety I would say as far as the pockets. There's also a little loop for you to put something like a paintbrush or a hammer or a wrench like a tool that you want to just have handy and there's like a snap that you can keep it in place with there's a cute little jean style pocket like a fifth pocket kind of a style thing with rivets just to add a little bit more of that kind of jeans looking element I would say that if you are somebody who's thinking that you might want to try making jeans but you're a little bit intimidated about making a whole pair of jeans and then putting in a lot of that hardware this is a really fun project to actually it's not huge it doesn't take forever when you're installing the hardware, worst comes to worst, you've wasted a pretty small scrap of fabric. It's not the end of the world and you haven't spent the hours that you will do when you're making jeans. But it's got top stitching, it's got rivets, I mean snaps, jeans aren't always going to have snaps. I guess if you're making a jean jacket it might have something like that. But I felt like a lot of the elements were comparable and so I feel like that would be really quite cool if you wanted to just get your hand in and have a go with some of those techniques. This also closes with a big buckle at the back, which I think is really nice and easy for taking on and off. I feel like overall it was a really fun, really cool make, and I know that my husband's uncle really loved it. The other thing that I made for quite a few people that I also kept one back for myself are these 3D face masks. Now this one's been washed and worn a lot, so it's probably a little bit color faded now. The inside or the sort of contrast, I chose to use some rainbows, cause you know, NHS and all that. I'll put up some pictures so that you can see what they looked like when they were fresh, but hopefully you can spot that we've got these little doctors, nurses, midwives, anesthetists, whoever, all the important people working in the NHS and showing that they actually have superhero shadows because healthcare workers are absolutely superheroes in my opinion. If you haven't seen these face masks before, it's a really interesting, unusual design where you've got these little flaps that fold in and then that goes over your nose, this goes under your chin. and it gives you a pretty good fit there's a little bit of space you don't feel like you've necessarily got fabric like in your mouth and as you can see these are pretty good for not really misting up with glasses I would say that they are a little hit and miss and it depends a little bit maybe if I haven't quite lined things up very well but overall they're one of the more comfortable fabric face masks to wear and what I did with these so in addition to oh my gosh that was a little bit much <laughs> in addition to making one of these for myself, obviously, because I am an NHS worker, I also made them for a load of my NHS co-workers. So I'm a midwife working in London. I made one for all of the midwives who are on my team. I also had a few extra special requests. So I went back and made a few extras. I can't remember how many in total. I think I made something like 20 maybe slightly more than that, maybe closer to 25. I also made some for my relatives who work in healthcare. So my husband's aunt who works in Ireland as a nurse. I also sent one to two of my cousins in the States who work as nurses. And I think overall, everyone who got them really appreciated the sentiment. Who doesn't like a handmade gift and who doesn't need a mask these days anyway? But it really meant a lot to me. I saw this fabric from So Scrumptious online and I really, really wanted it as soon as I saw it. And I wasn't quite sure what to make with it initially. And it became pretty clear pretty fast that face mask was the obvious option because everyone can use those these days. And for me, I just had a bit of a whole emotional journey when I was making these, when I was giving them to people, because honestly, I mean, if you are someone who works in healthcare, has used a lot of kind of the healthcare services, you can appreciate how much work, how much hard work, physical work, emotional energy goes into looking after people day after day. I know that these fabrics came out basically because of COVID and everyone having that little bit of extra appreciation for healthcare workers. But for me, it's not about COVID. It's about the day to day, regardless of global pandemic, how much people push themselves and break their backs and get themselves injuries and have emotional trauma from looking after people and putting themselves so much into that. And I feel really you know, really strongly that I really appreciate every single healthcare worker out there, wherever you are in the world, however much you're able to do for people. And 
I don't feel like there's enough overall recognition. And I'm not asking you guys for recognition. It's not about that. It's more just that for me, it was a, a special way to say thank you to some of the special healthcare workers that are in my life. And it was a Christmas gift that I gave to lots of people. And I feel really proud when I wear mine. And I hope that all the people that I gave it to feel really proud when they wear theirs as well. The next thing I want to talk about is the one that I'm actually wearing now. This is the Toaster Sweater version 2 by Sew House 7. You probably know this pattern if you've been sewing for any length of time. If you look on Instagram, this is such a popular sewing pattern. And as soon as I made it, I got it. It really is a, a great pattern. It's really simple and easy to put together. It's got a really fun neckline detail, which probably my microphone is screwing up. I'll put up some pictures, obviously, so you can see what it looks like just a little bit more overall. This was made in a really, really lovely, it's called Cozy Colors fleece back cotton sweatshirting. I've seen this for sale quite a few places, but I got mine from Somi Sunshine. It comes in a whole rainbow of colors. It's got these little flecks of other color on top of it, which is really cool. So it's not just kind of standard, basic, one solid color. It's got a little bit of something extra, which I'm a fan of. This is a burgundy colored one and I really like the color. I like it on me. It was a nice wintry kind of a color, really great to wear around Christmas time as well. And this is one that I will definitely be going back to. I am planning to make another one of these. You will have seen that in my spring sewing plans video. I'll link to that if I haven't already. But yeah, this is a really great basic sweatshirt. This fabric is really so cozy. It's called Cozy Colors for a reason. It is so cozy and this sweater is called the Toaster Sweater. Just overall, I feel like you can probably get an idea of how warm and wonderful and cuddled and lovely it feels to wear. So I wore this sweatshirt probably like to death already. It still looks good, <laughs> but I know that basically anytime I was chilly, if this was not in the wash, it was going on me. I put this on all the time. So it's one that I will definitely say is a firm staple in my wardrobe. And I did consider making a whole ton of them immediately when I cut, when I made the first one, but I thought, okay, let's just ease up a little bit. I don't need a hundred of these things. I can make a few other cozy things. Um, but yeah, this was a really fun make. And there are some nice details on here. It's got a little side slit at the bottom, a bit of a high low hem as well. So it's a bit shorter at the front than it is at the back. This pattern, I decided to do the pose like a pattern model. If you're not familiar with this, this is a hashtag over on Instagram, which I think is just really fun and silly, where you basically look at how the pattern model is posed for the pattern and you try and do your own best mock-up of that. My husband and I had a really fun day going around after I made this sweatshirt and we took pictures in a whole variety of location, did our best to try and line things up to get them to look like the pattern. We laughed a ton while we were doing it. He's like telling me to do these really awkward, like tilt your head to the left, but keep your eyes over here. And you know, you're trying to get like an exact image. It was a whole lot of fun. If you guys have not seen that hashtag, do check it out on Instagram, hashtag pose like the pattern model. If you want to, you know, try it yourself, please do let me know if you do, because it really tickles me when people do. But if you use the hashtag, I follow the hashtag, I'm sure I will see it anyway. So that was just a little extra fun we did with this particular pattern. But yeah, honestly, like this is such a great sweatshirt, great instructions came together really quickly. I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. The next couple of patterns were ones that I made for the Black History Month Pattern Makers Challenge. This is another hashtag over on Instagram, hashtag BHM for Black History Month Pattern Makers Challenge. And this was something that was put together as a way to really highlight and draw attention to the black pattern makers around the world. And it was such an interesting challenge. I found out about a ton of new sewing pattern designers that I did not know about. So that's always going to be a bonus. But I also just saw so many great, cool makes, so many great, inspiring makes. So that's another hashtag you might want to go have a look at if you did not see it. Hashtag BHM Pattern Makers Challenge. I'll pop it on the screen if I've got it slightly wrong, but I believe that's what it is. And yeah, so I made a couple of things for this month. So it was for the whole month of February, you can make anything from a black pattern maker. And the first one I made was called the Groove Dress. I know this is way too big to show you on here, but it's a hooded sweatshirt dress, basically. It's not necessarily meant to be a sweatshirt dress, but that's what I did with it. Um, but this one is from a pattern company called Made It Patterns. And I've been 
seeing their patterns actually before. This wasn't a new one to me, but it was the first time I actually made their patterns. They've been on my radar. There's a few things that they've got out that I've been thinking about making, but this made me just go for it, take part in the hashtag challenge. It made it all work out really well. And this one is basically, you can do a whole host of versions of this. It has got so many options. So the hood is an option. You can do a cowl neck, you can do a round neck. Um, you can do, I think there might even be a boat neck. You can do all different lengths of sleeves. You can do longer or shorter dress. It's basically just a nice jersey dress, like basic jersey dress that does what you need. It's also super full at the bottom, which is a big selling point for me. It's really fun to twirl around in, move around in. It's got great sort of fullness there, so it's a lot of fun to wear. I did make this one probably a little bit slightly different from how it was originally intended because I used the sweatshirting. I wanted to make it a bit more sweatshirt-like. So I added some cuffs, which were not in the original design. I also added some patch pockets because who doesn't need pockets on any kind of a dress that they've got? And I thought patch pockets suited the design of this one a little bit more. Also, the side seams would end up being quite far back and probably a little bit awkward to access. But I really love the way the patch pockets look. So as you can see, the fabric that I've chosen, it's a sweatshirting, but it's a fleece back sweatshirting. And I wanted to show the fleecy back, so I thought that was a cool detail. So I chose to use that for the hood. So I showed the actual inside for the hood. But also then when I stitched the pockets on, I wanted to keep the edges raw so that you could see a little bit of that sweatshirt fleecy stuff peeking around from the back as well. And I feel like it just sort of tied it together. I also decided not to hem this one. I just left the edge raw. Again, I felt like if a little bit of that fleecy stuff shows when I'm moving around, all the better. It kind of brings the whole thing together. So I feel like that worked out as a cool design on the whole. The one thing that I would probably do differently that I didn't do this time is because this fleece back cotton is quite fluffy. It was a lot of bulk. And so for the sleeves in particular, when I was stitching up the sleeves, I probably should have widened them a little bit because I think it's more designed for like a lightweight cotton jersey or viscose jersey. But mine was like this thick, you know, bulky fleecy stuff. So the sleeves ended up being a little bit tighter, I think, than they're intended. And particularly the cuffs are a little bit tight to get over my hands. I can do, but I can't really pull them up very much. And it's nice to be able to pull the sleeves up if you get a little bit overheated or if you need to wash your hands, have your hands free. But I still feel like it turned out really cool. I managed to take some pictures when it was snowing, which you might have already seen. I probably popped them up already because we didn't have a huge amount of snow, but we had a little bit and I embraced it when I did. And I did feel like this dress was like so perfect for the snowy weather. I feel, I felt like some kind of snow queen just kind of wafting around in the snow. So it was a really fun one to make this year. And I'm so excited to have finally made something by Made It Patterns and I will be making more of theirs again. The other dress that I made for the Black History Month Pattern Makers Challenge was one called the Akini Dress. And that was by a company called So Explicit. That is a pattern designer that I had never heard of before, new to me, and I am very much interested in their other patterns. They have some really cool, unusual designs. Now this is a bias cut dress. I've never made a bias cut dress before, which I'm kind of surprised by, um, but it's true. It was cut entirely on the bias. It has this incredible cowl neck. The drape and movement of this fabric, especially because it's been cut on the bias, is just incredible. The fabric itself is, stunning if I do say so myself this is a Dashwood Studio viscose uh, viscose fabric that is designed by Rachel Parker Rachel Parker has designed a lot of fabrics for Dashwood Studio and I feel like I really love every single one that she's done this one for sure she knocked it out of the park I love the geometric shapes I love the bold color on there I feel like this is such a cool fabric and I feel like it was a really great one to pair with this dress because it's cut on the bias, it is really great at just kind of, you know, draping over your figure, fitting where it needs to. There's an elastic waist channel inside this dress as well, so that helps to cinch in a little bit at the waist. This has quite a dramatic high low hem, so it's higher at the front than it is at the back, which I think is really beautiful, like a really lovely detail. I actually don't have any dresses with high low hems, so this was the first one that I have got of that as well, so it's nice to have one of those in my wardrobe. This was really a fun one to put together because it's really nicely finished on the inside as well. Really clever how you put together that cowl neck detail. It was, I don't even think I could explain it to you, but trust me, it was really clever and really cool how it came together with everything inseamed, um, enclosed on the inside. We've got a 
bias bound armholes as well. So this is one that I did actually make the bias binding from the actual fabric just because I feel like that was gonna make it look a little bit neater and slicker on the inside. And it does look really cool. It's all French seamed as well along the side seams. So overall, really great finish on this one. And I do love the way this one looks on me. It is definitely a summer kind of a dress. I made this in February. It was really cold. I put on my warm face, <laughs> tried to pretend that I wasn't freezing when I was taking the pictures, but it's just so beautiful, so elegant. I'm gonna be wearing this one really a lot. It feels like a really special dress, but I'm not keeping it for special occasions because every day can be special, right? So I'm gonna be wearing this dress a whole lot and I was so excited to make this one. Next up, we have got a knitted make. So I'm pretty new to knitting. I started knitting January of last year, before the pandemic, before everyone else decided to take up new crafts. I had been wanting to learn to knit for a long, long time. And the first thing that I made, like proper project that I made, was the Susie sweater by Abek Along Anna. And I made that last year and it turned out really well and it was surprisingly easy considering I'm a total beginner. And I did want to try and make it again, but I wanted to make it with different kind of wool just to see what the difference was so I could learn a little bit more about different kinds of wool. But also because I just wanted to make the same thing again now that I understood where I was going with the different steps just so that I can really understand a little bit more about the knitting process. I'm really glad that I did that, honestly, and I feel like this one was a lot more just relaxing to knit. The first one seemed pretty stressful because everything was new. I wasn't quite sure if I was doing things the right way, so I really like that this one was a little bit more familiar. Again, I'm still a mega beginner and I did make mistakes on it, but it's still good. So I also chose to do, I think it's called a color fade. Um, I'm very much like don't really know what I'm talking about with knitting as much as I do with sewing. So I've made some notes because I feel like I'm never gonna remember how to say all the things that I want to say. Um, but this was made with Isager, Isager, alpaca wool. So it's alpaca wool and that was held double with the Isager Highland wool. If that makes sense to the knitters out there. I'm sorry if it doesn't, I'm trying my best. But basically there was one shade that I used for the top third of it that was knitted together with a really kind of a, I think it was called ice blue shade. And then when I got a third of the way down, I swapped over to a different color of the thinner alpaca wool that I then paired up still with that same ice blue. So the ice blue is consistent throughout, but the thinner alpaca stuff changes color at thirds as I go down the sweater. I think that probably makes sense. I did figure out my own kind of pattern of changing up colors. I looked up a few ways online of how you can change colors because I didn't necessarily want to go strictly from blue to purple to green. I wanted it to fade in the one color to the other and I feel like it worked out pretty well what I did so I'm, I'm happy with how I did that. I will put up a little image of the pattern that I used. If you are a knitter, I'm sure that will make sense to you. If you're not a knitter, then I'm sorry. It probably just looks like complete madness. But yeah, it was really cool how it came together with the fade and I was really excited with how well I was able to line that up with both the sleeves and the body. I think that came together pretty cool. Um, I think on the whole, the main things that I would change when I'm making it again, I did size this up. So the first one I made was extremely fitted. It is meant to have negative ease and be quite a snug fit, but I actually wanted to have it a little bit looser, a little bit more oversized just to kind of throw on a bit more over what I'm, you know, if I'm a bit chilly, I can throw it on over whatever I'm wearing. And because I sized up, it's a little bit too big in the neck area, which I guess I probably should have anticipated. Again, new knitter, gonna make these mistakes and then I'm gonna learn. But it is probably a bit lower cut and a little bit more sort of loose in the neck area than I probably would have preferred. So I probably should have kept with the same size there and then just sized out maybe from like the body downward. But anyway, live and learn. It turned out really well. I do really love this one. The first one I made was like a synthetic wool blend. This one was pure wool, so it's definitely warmer. It's definitely got a little bit more drape and movement to the fabric, which I guess is the alpaca factor. So it's got that kind of lighter weight wool in it. And it's really cozy. I really loved wearing this one. So this was a really overall big success for me having made my second ever knitting project. Really proud of how it turned out. Next up is the Eve dress by Sew Over It. 
this is a wrap dress. I've made this one before, so it's always nice when you've made something, you know that the fit is gonna be right. You know that you're gonna like the techniques, how it all goes together. So it was pretty fun to make this one again. I made it pretty differently this time than I did last time. So my first version was made with like a, a velvet fabric and it had a short sleeve, kind of a butterfly sleeve thing. And it was really pretty, really loved that version, but I really had wanted to make one with more of a lightweight, viscose -y kind of thing where it was a lot more drapey, a lot more fluid. And I decided to go ahead with this fabric. This was a fabric that I found, this was from the Fabric Godmother. And this was one that I saw posting uh, posted on Instagram and as soon as I saw the fabric I very much knew that I wanted to get it and I thought of this pattern straight away. So this fabric is a viscose crepe. It does have really beautiful lovely drape to it. It's got a really nice handle. It's very cooling to touch actually. I really really liked about this one in particular. It had these really beautiful bold floral print design so I loved the color of the flowers I loved the design of it but I also really love that it was on a black background often when I get this kind of fabric I see this kind of floral fabric it's often on a navy blue background but I like the black I felt like it would be really versatile to be able to wear all different times of year and I definitely think that worked out I hacked this one a little bit so the sleeves you either have a short butterfly sleeve which I did previously or you can do a tighter three-quarter length sleeve but I knew for this, because I wanted to be able to wear it in the colder weather, I wanted it to be a long sleeve, but I didn't want just boring long sleeves. I wanted to add a little bit of extra something. So I slashed and spread the sleeves to make them a little bit looser. I also lengthened them all the way to full length and I added three rows of shearing elastic at the wrist and that gives it a nice little balloon effect at the wrist. I really love how it turned out. It was one of those things where I was hacking it not quite sure what I was doing, felt like it should work and it was perfect, it was really, really cool. So I'm really happy with this one, one of my sort of most versatile makes I think that I've made since the beginning of the year. And then now over to a very much tried and true TNT pattern for me, which is the Librea T by Half Moon Atelier. I have made a lot of versions of this top, I have hacked it into a dress, I think I might be on number seven now, something like that. But yeah, I've, I've made quite a few of these and I love every single one. This one is made in a viscose, it's a Mind the Maker stretch viscose. So it does have a tiny bit of stretch to it. I don't know how easily I'll be able to show you. I will do my best. So it does stretch just a bit, not anything too crazy, but you can get a little bit of movement, which just makes this that bit easier to take on and off. I did basically the sort of standard pattern for this, but I did a, a little hack on the back. So I added a center back seam. This is meant to just be one piece cut on the fold on the back. I added a center back seam and a little keyhole opening with a button and loop closure. So I just made a little loop of the fabric, stitched it onto here. And I think that's a, a really cute effect. It's not anything too over the top, just a little subtle opening at the back there. And I will say that when I made it and I wore it, I was surprised with how airy it was. There's actually quite a lot of air moving in through that little hole in the back, a little ventilation. And that's been quite nice when it's been a little bit warmer for some of these days. And I think this is actually gonna be a really great summer top. I think I'm gonna wear it a lot during the summer. The fabric is a viscose stretch. Like I said, I got it from um, the Village Haberdashery. It's actually a Mind the Maker fabric, which is a well-known fabric company that I hadn't bought from before. They tend to be on the pricier side, which did put me off, but this fabric, because you don't need much for the shirt, it's just a, a meter. I might've even gotten a remnant slightly less than a meter. I felt like I could push the boat out and go for it. And it was really, really lovely to work with. For a viscose fabric, it was surprisingly structured and it wasn't as lightweight as most of the viscoses that I've worked with, which just meant that when I was working with it, it didn't shift around as much and it really came together really, really nice and neatly. Overall, I really do like this shirt, the style of the shirt, which is why I've made so many of them. It's such a simple shape. It's just one front and back piece. Normally, obviously I added an extra back piece by splitting it in half, but normally it's just a front and a back piece it's just a kind of grown on sleeve, so there's no actual sleeve part. So there's a sleeve cuff if you wanna have it, but there's another version where you just use bias binding all around the sleeves and up towards the neck as well. 
This has a bias binding facing, so bias binding on the inside of the neckline for this version. But overall, it's like one of those, you know you know it's gonna come together quickly, you know it's gonna fit you, you know you're gonna love it. And I was so delighted with how this one turned out. Yet another one of these to add to my big collection and it's not gonna be the last one. Just to say as well, this one is one of those patterns that is made from multiple bust cup sizes. There's no darts either. So I don't know how she does it, some kind of voodoo, but it fits me great and I really love it. Now the last one that I'm gonna tell you about is one that I'm probably the most proud of, which I don't know if it particularly makes sense out of everything that I've made, but it is what it is. But this is a hoodie, a zip up hooded sweatshirt, the Journey hoodie from Sinclair Patterns. And this is something that I'm particularly excited about because A, it's something that I never really thought I would make. This year I've been making a point and last year as well that when I need a new item of clothing, I'm making it rather than buying it, which is making me try things that I wouldn't have tried before. If I needed a zip up hooded sweatshirt, I would previously have just bought it online, wouldn't have thought much of it. But actually making it was really surprisingly satisfying and pretty straightforward. It was quite a cool make. I don't think it's necessarily like super beginner, but I think if you've made a few things before, you could definitely make this kind of thing for yourself, particularly if you've had a little bit of experience with stretch fabrics. But even then, I think the instructions would tell you what you need to do if you haven't particularly worked with stretch before. So let me show you. It's going to look a lot more like a hooded sweatshirt probably on my body, but it's just the case with all these things, right? But what I really love about this as well is the colors that I've used, the contrast that I've used. So I really wanted to make a um, French terry. So if you can see, it's got that loop back on the inside. So it's, this is a French terry fabric from Stoff and Still, the black and white stripe. And I had a vision of this before anything that I knew I wanted it to be striped. It's a raglan sleeve, so as you can see, there's no sort of particular sleeve to attach as it were. It's gonna be really simple for installation. I did try and, and um, stripe match as much as I could across these, but it, it's sort of probably better on one side than the other. On the back as well, I think for whatever reason, certain areas were able to match up a bit easier. As you can see, I also played with the stripe direction. So we've got a vertical stripe on the hood, horizontal stripe on the body. I definitely matched up all the stripes on the side seam, on the sleeves. I'll probably put some pictures up because I know I'm not gonna be able to show. But even across here with the zipper, I was really impressed with how well it all matched up. Had a little contrast sort of diagonal for the pockets. And this contrast fabric is, is probably what makes it for me. So this is a mint cotton jersey fabric. I got it from a, a new to me fabric shop called Lily and Mimi. I've not bought from them before. I actually went over there and bought some fabric after Becca from Patterns and Pages recommended it. And I thought I would try them out and really great customer service. Everything was really beautiful when it arrived. But this is a mint colored cotton jersey that I've used both on the cuffs, at the hem. I've used it to add a little bit of extra color onto the pockets. It also is obviously the, the inside of the hood, the facing as well in here, and a little tie as well. So I think it's a really fun combination, the color combination. It actually has more of a 90s feel than I was expecting it to, the, when it, the way it turned out. Now this all came from me thinking it would be cool to use some, uh, a, wear a striped hooded sweatshirt. I like stripes, I don't wear enough stripes, I don't sew enough stripes, so I thought this is something I could definitely use and it would go with loads of stuff in my wardrobe, so I wanted to do that. And then I thought, well, if I'm gonna make a hooded sweatshirt, I might as well use a different color on the hood, possibly different color on the cuffs, depending on what I can find. And actually, when I looked through my stash and what I had, I had some similar colored scraps, so similar to what I used there, more of like a patrol-y blue probably, but very similar that I thought would work really well and look really cool against the stripes. But unfortunately, when I was laying out the pieces, I had nowhere near enough of that fabric. I actually had a couple that I was considering, but neither of them were gonna be enough. But when I thought that I was gonna use those fabrics, I thought, well, what I could do is I'm gonna have that kind of a color and I'm gonna have the stripes. I bought this really cool cuffing from Sister Mintaka. So I thought this was gonna go along the bottom edge and also the edge of the sleeves and possibly the edge of the pockets. And I thought that would look really, really cool. And it's got very similar elements, though it's not quite the same. And the problem with that, when I ended up buying the, the fabric that turned out to be the right fabric, for one thing, this was not enough fabric 
or enough cuffing even to cover the bottom of the sweatshirt as well as the cuffs. It was slightly too small. I could stretch the cuffs to fit over my wrist, so I think that's what I would end up doing. But I mean, I guess I didn't really think about what length you're gonna get. And in my mind, I thought, well, it would be enough so that you can make a sweatshirt with it. Because otherwise you're not gonna buy two rolls of it. And I don't think I'm a particularly big person. I'm probably a medium sized person. But for me, it just, yeah, it was, it was not gonna be enough. The other thing that made it less possible is the way that this hoodie is constructed, the way the zipper is installed you actually need to have a long piece of fabric that you're gonna fold up against itself for the bottom of the hem in order to enclose the zipper. I don't know how much that is gonna make sense, but I'm hoping it makes sense when I explain it. But this ribbing, it's basically, let me just put a pin down so I don't stab myself. This is like one continuous piece. It does have a front and a back and it does have an edge, but you cannot separate these bits. They are like fused together. It's like one piece of fabric, kind of like a double gauze or something, you know, it's like it's, it's one, one piece, you cannot open it out. And because I couldn't open that out to be a big long piece that I can then fold up for enclosing the zipper, it was not gonna work for this hoodie. So I decided rather than trying to mess with the hoodie instructions, I wanted to try and keep it as it was designed and I would just keep hold of this for another project for another day. So I'd be very interested if any of you have recommendations of sweatshirt patterns, or to be honest, any sewing patterns that can use ribbing, let me know because I want to make use of this stuff. It is super cool. I love it, but I just wasn't able to use it for this particular project. But yeah, the, the overall finish of this one, I'm really pleased with. I think it looks really neat. I think it looks very much like I could have easily bought this in the shop. And the design is just so original. No one is going to have the same hooded sweatshirt as me. No one is going to put this together quite like this. And it's just such a such a fun little unique item of clothing to wear. I love the weight of the French terry, which is what I knew was going to be the case. It's it's got a little bit more of a, like a drape to it than like a sweatshirting. It kind of hangs a little bit more, and so I feel like it kind of snuggles me up in a different way, like a little bit of weight on me. But also, I like that it's not as warm as this kind of like fleece back sweatshirting. It's a little bit of a more lighter weight, so it would be really, really good in like spring, summer, autumn, maybe not winter unless I'm layering up, but I feel like it's gonna be one that I will wear all the time. I already know, you know when you finish a project and you know like this, this is one of my new favorite things and I know I'm gonna wanna wear this like all the time. So I'm super excited. I feel like this goes with a ton of stuff that I already have in my, my wardrobe. So I feel like it's gonna slot in really, really nicely. And it was just such a fun project. So yeah, Journey Hoodie from Sinclair Patterns. Big thumbs up from me. And we've made it. Thank you so much for watching, especially those of you who've hung on right on till the end. I'm hoping you might understand now why I'm thinking maybe once a month is probably enough. I probably don't need to jam all of this into one long video every three months. So I will be making another one of these in about a month's time to show you everything that I've been making in April. If you did enjoy my video today, I really do appreciate those likes, any comments as well. It just helps me to know that people are actually enjoying what I'm making and it makes me feel really good as well. So if you also are not already a subscriber, consider subscribing if you wanna see more and I will see all of you again before long. Bye.